welcome to RF transceiver design course. We are discussing passive components and impedance matching. In last class, we have discussed the uh, uh, switch chart and how to do the how to use the ZY switch chart to do the impedance matching. We will just take one more example on the same. So, in the last class, what you have considered your Z is 0.5 minus J1, and we have moved towards we have moved from Z from here to here and then move down. So, that is one solution. So, any uh, Smith chart problem has a any impedance problem has a 2 3 solution. You can also move uh, like up on the Z plane, that means adding inductor in series. And then you can also add uh, another inductor in series in, in parallel. <coughs> so, there is a, another alternate design is a series inductor and shunt inductor. So, that is alternate design. Uh, you can find out the value for the same which is a uh, channel which is J.5 and then there is a uh, uh, again this is a YL which is minus J one that and if you add uh, y in plus y c so that is y l equal to one that is your final answer. So uh, here you get initial solution that is l c <coughs> and this is a l l. If you think in terms of RF circuit design or RF uh, transceiver design on chip. We generally do not use this kind of configuration because you required many inductors and we will see in uh, next class uh, how the inductor you can represent on the on chip circuits. It will take a huge space if you want to represent inductor on, on chip. So, in that case if you try to have re reduce the space on chip it is better to use a capacitor. So, in some of the case there is a capacitor capacitor solution is also available. So, there is a series C and shunt C, but if your impedance is more inductive that means it is a Z plus point Z which is equal to 0 0.5 plus J1 and if it is uh, on the top of the Smith chart then you can use a capacitive capacitive matching in uh, on chip design and your size of the chip will reduce. So, what is the solution? Uh, here you can use a Z Smith chart, you can add a capacitor in series, so moving down and again moving down. So, let us say if your Z is a 0 0.5 plus J1 and if you uh, want to add a, a capacitor in series, so that is uh, this is a Z C uh, and the Z plus Z C which is a 0 0.5 plus. Uh, so, here you need to add a 0.5. So, when you are moving it down, so you are moving from uh, this 1 to 0.5. So, minus 0.5. So, that is Zc which is a minus say 0.5. And when you moved at this point your y. So, then because you have converted to the admittance, your y point represent the 1 minus a 1. So, this is a 1. So, 1 circle and minus a 1. So, if you add y c which is equal to j 1 that means if you travel on the same y me chart y plane and if you come down then it is a uh, solution which is a capacitor capacitor solution and you get a conductance is equal to 1. So, this is a same which is uh, drawn you are moving from z to y in where y in is equal to 1 minus y in is equal to 1 minus j 1 and you are moving from y in to uh, your conductance g is equal to 1 circle the 1 point. So, that is a 50 ohm. So, this kind of solution also exists when you want to do the impedance matching on chip, but in that case your uh, impedance which you want to match should be more inductive. Now, we will also see the uh, uh, tank circuit because uh, uh, tank circuits are uh, made up of passive components, but it will have a wide use in uh, tuned amplifier or uh, oscillators. <coughs> so, 
tune circuits uh, and uh, many let us say if we if you design an oscillator or PLL or if you design a tuned amplifier even in the impedance matching also we required a Q that we will see. So, uh, understanding of the resonance and the quality factor is important. So, if there is a uh, parallel RLC circuit that is a, a resonant circuit RLC, you can represent the admittance of this RLC tank in terms of y g plus c omega c plus 1 by j omega l if you consider g which is a conductance plus j omega c minus 1 by omega l. So, during the resonance your uh, imaginary part this will be 0 because there is a no means at this point at the resonance your energy stored and energy lost both are equal. So, your omega naught c equal to 1 minus omega naught l and which is equal to 0. So, at the resonant frequency omega naught your inductance means your uh, equation is 1 by under root lc. You can also write in terms of f naught which is 1 by 2 pi under root lc. So, as a designer means when you uh, design any circuit you, you can keep in your mind uh, instead of solving the this equation if there is a 1 nano Henry of inductor and 1 picofarad of capacitor it resonate around the 5 gigahertz of frequency which is uh, uh, better than 1 percentage of approximation. So, uh, this much at 5 gigahertz if you are designing your circuit. Uh, or oscillator or amplifier or low noise amplifier, you, you can think of the 1 nano Henry 1 picofarad capacitor combination. Now, we define the quality factor. Quality factor is uh, dimension less and that is a uh, proportional to the ratio of energy stored to the energy lost per unit time. So, that is why Q which is equal to omega energy stored by energy uh, power that is a uh, dissipated. So, if we try to find out the quality factor Q, so the voltage across the network is simply I in into R during the resonance. So, that is uh, only current which is flow through the R. Your total network energy, so that is I into C V square. So, uh, total is half C V square. So, you can write half C V is nothing but I peak into R. So, that is I R square and your average power dissipated in the resistor at the resonance you can write a half because it is a average power that I square R, but we are need to consider the half of the power. Now, if you just put the same thing on that equation that is uh, at resonance because we are finding the uh, Q at resonance and that is half C v square by half i peak square into r. So, this half half will be cancelled <coughs> and you will have a uh, finally the your value which is this both will be cancelled out your i peak. So, there is a omega naught always will be there. So, it is a omega naught c into r because this i peak and i square will be cancelled out only this here there is a single r and there is a r so there is omega naught c into r so that is a quality factor omega naught c into r so the quantity square root lc has a dimension of resistance so this is a resistance and is sometimes called as a we already know that this is a characteristic impedance of transmission line. So, when we have discussed the uh, transmission line the z is nothing but r plus j omega l by g plus j omega c and if your r is equal to g is equal to 0 you can get l by c that is for lossless line. So, same equation you can write a if you consider z c equal to z l which is equal to omega naught l. So, if you write omega naught into l if you are z l and if your omega naught is uh, 1 by root l c you can directly get l 
C. So your quieting factor Q for parallel resonant circuit. So Q of our parallel network at resonance you can write R by Z. It is a, not C. It is L into C. So your R which is equal to omega naught into L or omega naught RC. You can write the. So in the same case if you write 1 by root LC you can also get a. R by omega naught L. So, these are the very important equations of quality factor for parallel RLC network. Similarly, you can also get the for uh, series uh, RLC network that we will discuss. So, there is one more important uh, uh, feature of this uh, tank circuit that we are using when we use a, when we design a tuned amplifier that is and during the impedance matching also it is better to understand since the inductive and capacitive reactants are equal at resonance the inductive and capacitive branch current will be equal in magnitude. So if we want to find that how much amount of current will flow during the resonance in the your uh, inductor and capacitor. So, if you write I L is equal to I C because both current are same equal to V by Z. V is given by I in into R and Z is nothing but omega naught L as we have seen in the uh, last slide. Then I in R omega naught you can represent under root L C and then if you write it down I in which is a multiplication of quality factor Q. So, the Q times of current will flow through your tank circuit and that is the current flowing in the inductor and capacitor branch which is a Q times and very high. If we take an example, one simple example, if your Q is 100 which is for on chip it is very difficult to get, we drive the network at resonance with a 1 ampere current source. So, 1 ampere is also too high but for example, that 1 ampere will flow through the resistor but 1000 ampere will flow through the inductor. So, uh, in some of the uh, let us say electrical circuits where uh, the inductor and Q is that much high during that time that much current will flow through the your inductor and capacitor and that is very high. Now, this is advantageous for the circuit designer to use a tank circuit and get the high gain. If you have a tank which is a good Q and if you want to increase the gain at your desired frequency then you, your current means current which is flowing through the your uh, tank circuit your LC is uh, multiplied by the Q. So, your gain of your tuned circuit will increase. Similarly, uh, in uh, order to do the impedance matching also your high impedance will be converted to the low impedance, your low impedance will be converted to high impedance by this analogy only. The way we have seen the parallel RLC network, similarly there is a series RLC network and uh, we can also define the bandwidth and Q of the same. So, same uh, if you write a serial RLC ne network Z which is equal to J omega L 1 by J omega C plus R you can write R plus J omega L 1 minus 1 by omega omega square LC. So, if you want to represent a Q where in a per, uh, series circuit it is omega naught L by R and 1 by omega naught C R which is opposite to the what we have seen in the parallel circuit. So, here it is a Z naught by R, there it is a R by Z naught. So, now if you write a Z which is equal to R plus C omega L, if you take a, if you write a omega square here and then omega square minus omega naught square by omega square, you can uh, write this omega square minus omega naught as this omega square minus omega naught square as a omega minus omega naught omega plus omega naught. So, this omega minus omega naught if you consider it as a delta omega that is a small change in the frequency and your 
omega plus omega naught you can represent as a delta 2 omega minus delta omega and if your delta omega is much lesser than 2 omega you can write it down as a this is a 2 omega into delta omega. So, in this equation if you re, uh, replace this omega square minus omega naught square by 2 omega delta omega your this omega and this omega will cancel out this you will get the z which is equal to r plus j 2 l delta omega. So, you can also represent your what is your q? Uh, q is nothing but omega naught omega naught l into r. So, you can write l which is equal to q r by omega naught. So, in the same case you can write a q r means l is replaced with the q r by omega naught. So, this is a equation of z. And uh, when when we want to consider the bandwidth because we want to find the relation between bandwidth and q during the resonance your uh, impedance is a uh, impedance as a value of r but at the half power if you consider the bandwidth you should consider the half fractional bandwidth half power fractional bandwidth at that point your z square which is equal to 2 r square so if you write in the same in the same equation you will get q which is equal to 1 by bandwidth and this is a fractional bandwidth which is given by so this can be written as a uh, this q uh, omega naught by delta omega into omega naught by delta omega is nothing but the bandwidth so, this is how you will get the half uh, power fractional bandwidth and relation between quality factor q and bandwidth. So, your quality factor is always inversely proportional to bandwidth. Uh, other resonant RLC circuit means if you want to uh, do the impedance transformation, uh, if you convert a series resonant circuit means series L in uh, RS and represent in terms of the parallel uh, how the relation will go. So, here if you equate this is a series that is a j omega naught l s plus r s. <coughs> so, here l s and r s this is l s and r s it is represented as a parallel l p and Rp. So, if you do the series to parallel transformation how this L and Lp Rs and Rp is uh, has a relation you can write j omega naught Ls plus Rs into j omega naught Lp parallel Rp. Uh, if you uh, write down the equation of the same uh, multiply so uh, j omega naught Lp into Rp by j omega naught Lp Rp and equate the real part means real part and the imaginary part in this. So, there is a real part here and imaginary part and your q for parallel is r p by omega naught l p. So, this is for parallel and for uh, series your q is omega naught l s by r s. If you use the same in this equation uh, q then your r p which is equal to r s q square plus 1. So, your parallel resistance R p with L p is increase the q times that is the q square plus 1 and your uh, it is the same equation your L p which is equal to L s q square plus 1 by q square and your C p which is equal to C s q square plus. So, if same thing you consider for the capacitor also you can get the same equation q square by q square plus 1 and if your q is much much high then you can write means it is almost L p is equal to L s or C p is equal to C s. You can represent generalized transformation formula that your R p which is equal to R s q square plus 1 and your X p either it is inductor or capacitor it is represented as a q square plus 1 by q square. Now, uh, when we are uh, designing the uh, 
on chip uh, circuits we need to also consider the maximum power transfer in our mind because you are going to connect the many components which are there in the uh, two components uh, inductor and then uh, low noise amplifier and antenna uh, then uh, power amplifier and antenna so in all that case you need to consider the maximum power transfer and if you maximize the power so in, if there is a <coughs> zs which is equal to rs plus jxs and zl which is equal to rl plus jxl if you want to maximize the power your rs equal to R, rl means your source resistance should be equal to load resistance and your uh, imaginary part you need to cancel out so xs which is equal to minus xl so this is also called uh, as a zl should be conjugate match of zl this is also called a conjugate match if you want to do the maximum power transfer in reality uh, you can reduce the you can get the maximum power if you reduce the rs much but rs is not in our hand it is <coughs> it might be any source which is uh, which is a 50 ohm impedance and you need to match with the zl so your the conjugate match is important in order to do the maximum power transfer so based on this we can uh, based on the formula of q and l we can also make the impedance l matching means impedance matching the way we have done for in the smith chart similarly you can do with the equation also so you hear your R rp which is equal to rs into q square you can directly get the q which is equal to rp by rs and you can also get in terms of the rp means rp and xp but here uh, the important thing to consider is your rp resistance is high compared to rs so because there is a q, q times it is added so you can only do the rp here rp is greater than rs so when whenever there is a high impedance rp it is matched with the low impedance rs and the capacitor will always come in in parallel to the high impedance so you can uh, transfer from 500 ohm to 50 ohm or 1k to 50 ohm but capacitor will come in parallel with the high impedance <coughs> here you can also apply the analogy of uh, quality factor which is uh, quality factor current so during the resonance the q means uh, the current which is flow through the ls or c is q times of the tank circuit and is your as your current is increasing your resistance will reduce so your rs is reduced so this is the, this is the intuitive way of uh, understanding the impedance matching based on the q so if we take one example it is better to understand so your center frequency of 1 gigahertz if your r1 is a 50 ohm and r2 is a 50 m that means r1 you can consider as a rp and r2 you can consider as a rs so what is a uh, how the impedance matching will be there is a inductor l and the capacitor c and your here your resistance which is a r1 which is a 50 ohm and then there is a r2 which is a 5 ohm so you can find easily q so always the r1 which is high r1 by r2 minus 1 so your quality factor is 3 based on the quality factor you can find the omega naught l by r2 so that is q which is omega naught l by r2 so you can get l which is q r2 by omega naught which is around 2.39 so uh, that is a nano henry and your q uh, you can also find the capacitor that is a uh, uh, based on this equation q by omega naught r which will come in the faraday so this uh, value l and c you directly get from this equation here uh, one important uh, thing to understand based on this example that quality factor is to less q is equal to 3 
So, if uh, means Q, your Q is very high, that means your bandwidth is low. And if your Q is less, then your bandwidth is high. If you want to do the impedance matching for a narrower bandwidth, so this is a very wide band matching, this is called very wide band matching. And if you want to do the bandwidth, which is a narrow, let us say you have a, some Q, if your bandwidth is 25 megahertz at center frequency of 1 gigahertz, if your Q is a 40. So, in that case, you need to use a uh, another uh, method to do the impedance matching that is called a pi match, in which you have a control over the Q as well. <coughs> So, in the pi match, how it happens? You combine the both LC, LC together and there is a imaginary impedance Ri will come into the picture. So, always remember your R in the resistance which is a parallel to capacitor is greater than Ri and your Rp is also greater than Ri. So, Ri, Ri will come into the denominator that is the imaginary impedance R. So, you if you write on the right side your omega naught L2 by Ri because there is Ri resistance your omega naught L2 by Ri which is equal to Rp by Ri minus 1 that is called a Q right. So, on the right hand side the Q and when you write the omega naught L1 by Ri which is equal to R in by R i minus 1 that is a Q left. So, the total quality factor Q if you combine this inductor, so the actual circuit will be like this. In order to understand we have made it this way. So, if you combine the inductor L 1 and L 2 your actual Q is equal to omega naught L 1 plus L 2 by R i and you can write a this is a Q left plus Q right and your uh, L1, L2 you will directly get from this equation. And similarly, you can get a C1 and C2 and if you write uh, in this equation, so based on this equation, you will get the Ri which is imaginary impedance based on the value of input resistance, parallel resistance Rp and Q square. So, what you need to find is a imaginary impedance Ri. And Ri is depend upon the your input resistance and your parallel means this resistance that you want to match then you, and your quality factor that you have decided. So, if we take example we will understand. So, the required Q is still 40. So, now we have changed the example and your resistance is remain same. Uh, then your Q of 40 is a large enough to calculate the image resistance with approximate formula you will get image resistance Ri which is 0 0.04 0 0.054 uh, ohm and your Rp left is 5 ohm and Rp right is a 50 ohm you get Q left Q right which is a 9.57 and 30.4 you will get the capacitance C1 and capacitance C2. And based on this image resistance Ri, you get the inductor value L. This is very important uh, method of matching that is called a pi match. What is the advantage of this pi match? It has a two advantage. One is your Q is in your control. Another is your inductance value here is coming very less. Your L is around 0 0.35, 345 nano Henry. Our capacitor value is high because your resistance you consider value is too low. In reality, it will be high. So, if this R in and R p is increasing, your capacitor will reduce. In that case, you can use this uh, pi matching on chip and your inductance value will reduce and your entire chip size will reduce. Similar to the pi match, there is a T match. The only difference between pi match, so in pi match you have a inductor and capacitor and in T match you have a uh, two inductors and one capacitor. 
so as a as a circuit designer what you will choose obvious this one because it has a two inductors but in certain places where you want to do the off chip matching or you have a freedom of the choosing the inductor you can use a t match as well and you can also have a t match where the combination of uh, two capacitor one cap inductor will also be there that we will see when we uh, see the uh, smith chart I means representing the q on the smith chart so here the same thing you will get a quality factor q which is omega naught ri into so ri is the imaginary impedance here c1 plus c2 your c1 and c2 is in uh, parallel so there is a addition <coughs> So you will get here you are because imaginary impedance is in parallel to the cap uh, parallel to the capacitor your R i is a greater than R in and your R i is also greater than R s. So because of that here R i by R in minus one R i by R s minus one is written. Q on the left side and Q on the right side. So this is a Q left and this is a Q right. So total C1 plus C2 Q by omega naught into Ri, you get an Ri impedance will remain same. You will have an inductance value L1 from the Q left and L2 from the Q right. So you can also do the uh, T matching. You can also solve the problem on T matching by uh, using the same formula means which is mentioned here and try to find the value of inductor and capacitor of the same example. So here uh, almost everything of the impedance matching. So what we have done in uh, designing the impedance matching we have also seen the Smith chart, graphical method and the method by using the equation. So this both will help to design any impedance matching network and it will help you in your RF transceiver design. We will discuss more about the uh, passive components and impedance matching in the next class. Thank you.